This artisan bread made in Santa Fe, New Mexico is called Nativo. It is the first product coming out of the Northern New Mexico Organic Wheat Project, a grassroots attempt for rural revitalization of what was once known as El Norte, formed by the Upper Rio Grande watershed, the home to the eight Northern Indian Pueblos, and at one time, the far outpost of the Spanish territory. Nativo bread is made with organic grains grown by family farmers. Motivated by the desire to stay on the land rather than look for a job in the growing urban areas of Santa Fe and Albuquerque. These new growers have decided to go back to cultivating high quality organic wheat and small grains. Growing areas now include Mora, Anton Chico, Dilia, Costilla, Cuesta, and the Taos Pueblo, some of the poorest counties in the USA. In some respects, the wheat project is reinventing the wheel of a locally based economy. Around the turn of the century, villages and communities scattered throughout the valleys of northern New Mexico were largely self-sufficient in their food supply. Small grist mills dotted the land. A rich cultural diversity went hand in hand with abundant genetic diversity. During the 1892 Chicago Fair, New Mexico exhibited no fewer than 230 or so heirloom varieties of wheat, long since disappeared, with illustrious names like Wattle Plandero, Sibley's Golden, and Beardless Velvet. Mi abuelita siempre decía que el trigo te cuesta, que hacía las tortillas más sabrosas. With the advent of the Second World War and the dominance of corporate agribusiness, wheat growing in northern New Mexico went into decline until recently. In 1997, 150,000 pounds or so of high quality organic wheat was produced, and the 1998 harvest promises to yield at least three times that amount, due largely to a quick learning curve by the farmer. This here is the revival of the breadbasket of the Pecos River and the, and the Mora River, the Canadian River Basin. Worldwide grain reserves are shrinking and are estimated at a mere three months. This wheat project is just the beginning of what could, could happen, you know, of, of revitalization of people learning new techniques and, and staying on the land and using the resources that we have, which, you know, as you can see, we can produce perfectly good, uh, well, superior crops. If you do local growing and local milling, then also you come up with a local diet because those three, you know, used to be always one, uh, but we've forgotten that. They claim that that, uh, that wheat-fed beef is the, the tastiest. The transportation uh, issue, it's a small word, but it's a big issue because in New Mexico, there are a large distances to cover. Uh, we have growers up in Mora, up in Costilla, that are growing wheat in conjunction with uh, the project. And the mill is in Belen, and I'm over here in Anton Chico, and everything is several hours away from each other, so costs can escalate. But of course, it doesn't come all the way from Canada. The Rio Grande, Chama River, and the Pecos provide water and form the lifeblood of New Mexico. The irrigation ditches along these rivers, called acequias, were built by our ancestors and have allocated water to small plots of land for centuries. Precious commodity aside from the land itself, it's in danger of being lost. What happens is people don't use the water and then uh, the outside interests come in, they offer the people, the, the landowners, a lot of money for their water rights. And, uh, it breaks up the whole community ditch system as well as taking the water rights away from the valley. Today, land will not retain its surface water rights 
unless water continues to be used for agricultural purposes. It is resources such as clean water that the wheat project, if successful, will protect. managed mill could produce mixes for cream of wheat, pancakes, and tortillas. It could also develop a line of animal feed to be used locally in the production of organic meats and eggs. A major market for the local organic wheat are the local bakeries. New Farms of Las Vegas has started a tortilleria while the Cloudcliff Bakery is successfully marketing the new line of Nativo bread using the local flour and grains. This brand name, Nativo, could eventually expand and cover a whole range of products associated with the wheat project. Some of the red wheat. Comes Tom Siebel, and uh, he milled it for me too. It's kind of like a cracked wheat mill, which worked pretty well. And I just kind of sifted it into the mash. That's the grain. Actually, all the grain in there is American, and it also uses about 50 pounds of the locally grown wheat from Siebel. Uh, and that's the wheat one? Yeah, after about two weeks, that's what the finished product is. Informed consumers, aware of the importance of supporting locally based agriculture, are essential to the success of the wheat crop. Local builders have been expressing an interest in using organic straw bales to build houses for the growing market of people with chemical sensitivities. The farmers plant the seeds and we receive shelter, beer and bread. The basics. But there's so much more, like strong communities, organic foods and a healthy earth. That's why wheat is called the staff of life. It feels like food. <laughs> The challenge for the Wheat Project is to reconceptualize the role of farming in our lives, to understand food not as a commodity traded on the cheap, but rather as the very source of nutrition and health, as the integrating force of vital communities. <laughs>